I, I'm honored to be with all of you yeah, talking man. about one of the most interesting topics along the year and probably it's something that is back in our mind in the last two or three years and a half uh, because you know social media advertising is going so fast uh, everybody's talking about it I just read recently that social media advertising will grow to between 15 and 20 percent each year uh, reaching a worldwide value of 50 billion of dollars so it's incredible. And a lot of these come from the <laughs> fantastic work that influencers and brand can do together. Uh, how do you think influencers, uh, Laura, will, will affect your social media strategy along this year and the next few years? Yeah, I think it's really important uh, for the brands that I've worked with with Charles and St. Regis is to making sure that when we're thinking about campaigns and we're thinking about our business objectives, lining it up with which influencer would make the most sense. So on the Ritz Carlton side, if we're talking about a new hotel opening or a new restaurant opening, which influencer might be able to fit into that strategy? And on the St. Regis side, where we have beautiful rituals and traditions that we do every day, how can we align with a certain influencer to help tell that story to their community and to a broader audience? And uh, since there are so many industries you can work with, everybody say, hey, I'm, a, I'm an influencer, so let me work with you, brand. W which are the main criteria a brand like yours uh, decided to take into consideration, in consideration while choosing for influencers to bring along the path? Yeah, I don't think, um, there's a lot of different, oh, thank you, there's a <laughs> lot, oh yeah, you can hear me, yay. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we look at. Um, one, we would look at the engagement rate of the influencer. Uh, one would be the follower count, but to what other people have said earlier, that's important, but not necessarily the number one thing that we look at. Uh, from my personal point of view and for the brands that I work with, we really look at the content, the type of stories that you're sharing with your community, how can you bring to life travel and the destination, what other luxury brands may have you worked with in the past. And really, for me, it's about the content and telling that story, because that's very important to both of the brands that I work on. Travel is huge, and there's so many different ways to bring to life travel, but really thinking about my two brands, and again, if it's about rituals or the heritage of the St. Regis, uh, inviting someone to attend Thank a you. polo match with one of our connoisseurs, how would they tell that story and what works best? So really coming down to content in a variety of ways that the influencers use to share it. Yeah, no Please, I guess the, the same question is yeah. perfectly for you because uh, I know that from influencer's yeah. perspective, there are so many brands yeah. you can work with. So I guess yeah, you, you can also choose those brands you want to work with. Yeah. How do you find these criteria? Um, I think the, uh, the most major factor for me would be if I can relate to the brand, if it's aspirational, if it's something that I'm passionate about. Um, I also think the team plays a huge part in deciding if I want to work with them or not, um, if they understand my space, if um, they understand what my main passions are. Thank you. <laughs> and what my main strengths are, I think that plays the biggest part in selecting who to work with and partner on. And Laura, I know that we just defined the boundaries of what influencer is all about and they can work with. Do you follow a specific or niches that you wanna definitely look at? Like, I don't know, like must or don'ts that influencers should not have to work with? I mean, I think it, again, depending if you want to work with a luxury brand like the two that I represent, it's really about how you're telling that story. Uh, so there's, and we totally respect the way that influencers do that, because at the end of the day, I don't want you to come to one of my events or to one of my properties and trying to make content that doesn't work for your audience. Right. That's very counterproductive. Uh, but at the same time, when we're thinking about it, we are looking at the content. And really, how are you telling that travel story? Because it's wonderful to talk about the things that you're passionate about, but how are you bringing in the destination? And I do think it's important to what Liz said is really the relationship and collaborating. I look at every influencer opportunity as a way to build a relationship and to collaborate. What are your goals? What are my goals? And how do we work together? Because I feel like that is the way you get the best content and that you have the influencers that continue to want to work with you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this is very good just because I have, uh, based on this, a good question for Liz. Liz, would you say it could be only, not only, but it could be something related to a matter of content, the way you mm -hmm. create content, the way you can share with the brand, uh, the way the brand perceives the value right. that you do. Uh, do you prefer being fully creative when working with a brand or do you suggest brand give you any guidelines to follow? 
No, I think it, it's all about um, compromise. So as the creator, we understand what the, the final objective from the brand is, and then we can tailor that accordingly from our perspective and understanding our audience because we know what works best and they know what works best. So finding that middle ground is very important. Do you have any example back in your mind that you can share with us about a very good example to have worked with a brand and on the other side completely what went bad? Yeah, um, one client that comes to mind would be a luxury auto brand. Um, their strategy has been amazing, Land Rover. Um, they fully trust the creators that they partner with, they set parameters that they need to stick within, and they let them run free. Um, and that's often when the best content comes out of it. If it's so rigid and structured and, you know, directing the photographer to shoot the taillight this way or the dashboard this way or the car from this angle, that's when it gets a bit convoluted and difficult for the creator. You really have to let them run free, again, within specific parameters, but that's often when the best content comes to play. I, I can also guess that most of the collaboration you do with brand leads is because of the love that the brand you can share mm -hmm. and something that it really fascinated you. But ultimately, it's also work. So you know right. that it should be paid for that. Right. Which is the compromise in working with a brand because of the experience you can right. leave and you can share with the followers or on the other side, okay, I also take care of the money aspect of it right. or for me to leave on. I think that's hyper-personal. I think that's a very um, personal decision. I've taken on passion projects because I feel again, very passionate about them. And I've certainly have um, agreed to projects because the pay is substantial and I won't lie about that. I think, you know, this is a, a lucrative business to some extent and I think conversely, it can also be very difficult. There's a lot of competition right now. Um, but yeah, again, that's a, a very yeah. personal question and varies <laughs> greatly across the board. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a compromise, it's very, being on the edge that mm -hmm. sometimes the brand cannot perceive because say, hey, this influencer is costing me money, I'll let live an experience that nobody else right. can do. So I guess also, Laura, from a brand perspective, this is uh, something that a lot of brands that do have understand because ultimately influencer marketing is a work. Mm -hmm. So everybody know that influencers should be paid for doing something. But experiences as well is important, I guess. Yeah, I think for, for yeah, for the two brands that I, I work with, we work with influencers in a variety of ways. So for one, the monetary, and then one will do, we know you're coming to a destination and you want to stay with us in exchange for social posts or stories, whatever the case may be. So we work with influencers in, in very many ways and we try to figure out what makes best sense for the project and for the brand. And, and we do look at knowing that you, there are opportunities out there and want to make sure we are selecting the influencers that past clients also represent what we think would make sense for a luxury travel company. So I, I completely understand that. That's why we look at who they worked with in the past. Are they working with Dior and Chanel? Or are they working with maybe some other brands that may or may not align with ours? Uh, do, do you think the brand and the word uh, really understand what influencer marketing is all about? which is the value that influencer has from the inner creating content production, or do you think this matter of awareness is not as, as good shared enough? I mean, I personally speaking, I, yes, I think we very much understand the power of influencers and making sure we're working with the right ones. I'm sure probably some of you saw the tweet from Kylie Jenner last week that pretty much shut down a Snapchat stock market. So we know it's important and really aligning yourself with the influencers that, again, are passionate about our brand, are passionate about travel, and are great content creators. So if we're looking for someone to write an article or to create videos, we want to make sure that we're using someone that can that uses that medium to the best of their ability to tell our story. And I think we're, we want to work with a variety of different content creators across the globe. Let's have last question for you. Uh, what do you think brand exactly know now about influencer marketing? What do you think brand better have to understand the influencer as a person and as a worker itself? I have a lot of different <laughs> thoughts on that. Um, I think that Again, as I mentioned, the team is exceptionally important. 
um, on the brand side and also on the creator side. If the creator needs to produce a larger scale production for the client, then they have to scale accordingly. Um, your team is vetted and they know this space inside and out and I think that's really important. There are a lot of brands that don't have that ability and I think that's when it fails. Um, in terms of harnessing the power of creators, I think some brands do it really well but I don't think brands have fully harnessed the power of these creators. I tend to uh, stray away from the word influencer because I think they're a bit stronger than that. They're their own publishers. If you look at a lot of the creators that produce content on a daily basis, to watch that from a brand side would, I mean, you would have to put a large amount of resources behind that. So. I like to view them more as powerhouses. Yeah, we can all say that it's a matter of education that the brand and the influencers need to sit in the table and start discussing about because uh, if the two entities doesn't match mm -hmm. with the idea of thinking and working together uh, on a foundation of what influencer is about and on the other side what the industry requirements are about, right. there is no a long way that they can collaborate together. But really appreciate that we have the chance to talk about that. So feel free to keep the conversation long yeah. lasting in the last year and a half because I guess a lot of brand and agency are strongly struggling with the idea of um, thinking that influencers are as well as important and creating content independently. Right. And having this mix of conversation also lead brand awareness and the brand edge as well to work yeah. properly. So on that note, um, I think that brands should look at a lot of this content outside of social. We've done a lot of projects where the content has been used in print and out of home. Um, so I think that that one consideration that should be taken. Yeah, I think that's an important. So when we look at working with different types of content creators and influencers, I'm also thinking about social and my social channels, but we also have the Ritz Carlton magazine and the um, different types of content hubs that we have. So we look at it from across the board mm -hmm. to say who would be great, who loves to write and would be able to write a great article for us in their point of view. So definitely looking at all the ways we have to distribute content and trying to pair up the influencer with the project. Good girl, thanks a lot for <laughs> having this quick conversation, but very intense. I love uh, the energy. Well, I hope we try to have the same energy as our speaker before. So thanks a lot for this opportunity to stay together. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>